Now, instead of like then developing into something that looks like a shrimp or a lobster, uh, they turn into something pretty weird. They uh, grow like into a mass of cells, which then grows these roots that go out and basically fill up the crab's whole body. Uh, now you have to remember that crabs, uh, you know, they have an exoskeleton. So inside, it's all just you know, you, when you eat crab, you see. I mean, it's just muscle and juice, and, you know, it's just organs. So it's kind of easy for a parasite to just kind of infiltrate the whole thing. And uh, and this this drawing here just shows you like uh, what it looks just on one side, on the inside of the crab. I mean, they even like the, 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 the roots even will wrap around the, the eye stalks. Um, and yet, you know, the crab goes around in its business, goes about its business. You can't really tell if you're uh, a novice that a crab is infected with this thing. Um, so along the, uh, in Europe and here in the United States, a lot of the crabs are infected with saculina or relatives of saculina. They're all over the place. So the, the crab will go about its business eating, eating uh, snails or what have you. The food goes into the crab, and then the parasite eats some of the food. So, so this terrified and horrified Lancaster. He hated it. And not only that, but for him, it was a metaphor. Uh, and so he wrote about Saculina in this essay called Degeneration, a chapter in Darwinism. And it's just, uh, you know, you. You kind of wish for the days when scientists would kind of go all out like this in their writing. Let the parasitic life once be secured in a way go legs, jaws, eyes, and ears. The active, highly gifted crab, I mean, I didn't know the crabs are highly gifted, but <laughs> <laughs> they become a mere sac, absorbing nourishment and laying egg. And then he refers later to how parasites degenerate, quote, just as an active, healthy man sometimes degenerates when he becomes suddenly possessed of a fortune, or as Rome degenerated when possessed of the riches of the ancient world. The habit of parasitism clearly acts upon animal organization in this way. So, you know, he's, and he's basically saying, like, okay, you've got this free-living animal, you know, like a shrimp or a crab or some other crustacean, and then you compare it to Saculina. <coughs> which loses its eye, which loses its leg, which loses lots of things, and seems to basically go down the, the hierarchy in life. It you know, you know, becomes a mere sack. You know? And he, and he kind of thought that, that these, um, these, these tendrils I'll tell you about, that they were like plant roots, as if that was somehow uh, less sophisticated than you know, animals. Now, you know, the botanist here should be rightly outraged that, that he would put plants below animals. I mean, plants are complicated things in their own right. They, they, and they're not sort of a simpler form of animal. It's just not how it works. That's not how they evolve. <coughs> and that's the same thing goes for parasites like Saculina. So, um, so these are, you know, close-up drawings um, from, uh, uh, about of, sacu of, of saculina and some related species. Um, so on the left are some of the different roots, and on the right is kind of a, a, a cutaway showing uh, the fine structure of, of the roots. These are really sophisticated things, actually. I mean, these are structures that are able to um, make their way inside another animal without killing the animal, without being attacked by its immune system that can actually extract food out of its host and process it. You know, it's a, the, the animal doesn't have a mouth, but it has found a way to eat. And that is not some, that is, uh, it's not like it's reverting to something that came before. There was nothing before like saculina. Saculina evolved into something new. Something new and pretty amazing. Um, saculina doesn't just find a way to kind of fill up its host, it actually also alters its host's uh, behavior. So to begin with, uh, if you're a crab and you get infected with saculina, you get castrated, you are sterilized, you lose the opportunity to lay your own eggs. The parasite hij hijacks and shuts down your reproductive system. Why would it do that? Because why should you, the host, be wasting your energy trying to build eggs 
or to go find a mate when you could be doing the really important work of feeding your parasite. So that's what the parasite does, is it, it, it hijacks uh, the, the physiology of, of the crab. What's particularly uh, eerie about Saculina is that um, if it infects, um, if it, the way it manipulates it most <coughs> depends on which sex it gets into. See, what happens with crabs is that um, they, when they are bearing their own young, uh, they, they let the, uh, the eggs develop in a, in a little brood pouch at the base where that yellow thing is. That yellow thing is saculina. Normally, that would be where a female crab would ra raise her own eggs. And then, when they were ready to be released, the crab will go up to you know, a rock in a, in a, where the water's circulating and, and just let them spray out and bob up and down and they'll actually like swirl her her uh, claws around to get them away, to let them disperse. Now, if she is infected with saculina, what happens is that um, she will do the same thing when the parasites are ready to come out. So the parasites, in a sense, give her a signal like, we want to leave. And then she goes up to a rock and releases the parasites as if, as if they were her own offspring. Now, if that wasn't weird enough, <laughs> if saculina affects a male crab, it starts forcing the male to act like a female. So the male starts to take care of that region of its body in the same way the female would. So females like scrape off the algae, for example, to, so that the, the uh, so that to keep their 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 larvae healthy inside the brood pouch. The males will do the same thing. The males are pretending like, you know, in effect, they're pregnant. And then when it's time for the parasites to come out, the, ma the males will go up on a rock in the water and bob up and down just like the females. So the, so the parasite is, 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 is pulling the strings to get them to do what it wants. So um, I, I, find, I find it quite gratifying to, to discover that you know, modern research on parasites was, was much more in accord with my impressions as a kid <laughs> than with these old kind of Victorian notions that really just didn't hold water. Uh, and so in, in working on my book, I would look for these different examples of, of sophistication and success. I and mean, these are not two words you might associate with parasites, but you know, once you get into the biology, the, the, it's hard to uh, see it otherwise. And parasites have evolved this kind of success over and over and over again. So one of, one of my favorite examples is not a, an animal parasite, but a fungus. It's called cordyceps. <coughs> and um, cordyceps is just really quite amazing. So what happens is that the spore can only grow in ants. And each species of cordyceps can only live in a certain species of ant. And they're found in, in lots of tropical regions around the world, uh, in Southeast Asia, in, in South America. Nobody quite knows how many species of cordyceps there are. There are probably many, I mean, hundreds, thousands, nobody knows. They've only studied a few. So what happens is that cordyceps, as a spore, plops onto an ant. And it then produces some enzymes so it can actually burrow inside the animal. The animal's still alive, and just like the crab, it's going about its business. But what happens now is that the fungus starts to grow inside the ant. And it starts soaking up the nutrients that the ant is eating. Now again, on the outside, the ant looks totally fine. It's going about its business and so on and so forth. But inside, it's got something that looks kind of like Saculina, this huge set of, of branches that is growing and growing and growing inside of it. 